What's happening guys? Today we are checking out this 1961 Buick Electra that I just picked up. And what a fine automobile it is. Uh, they certainly don't make them like this anymore. And they didn't make this one for very long either. Being a 61, they really only made this exact body style for one year. Uh, before this, they would have had these massive tail fins front and rear. Um, now this just has these little baby stumpy things front and back. But I think it's a really handsome car. Um, I'm going to be checking it out today and telling you why it's my next project and what I'm going to do with it. Stick around. So this car would have originally come with a Buick 445 big block V8 for Wildcat 445. However, this thing's been sitting a long time. Uh, it does rotate over, but not that well. Um, I don't think it's going to be something I'm going to be using for this car, actually, because I find when you get these big block cars and you want to go cruising them, you just don't because they get seven miles to the gallon, and it's not that much fun to fill them up these days. Uh, and this one only has a two-speed automatic transmission as well, which is not that suitable for any type of like highway driving or anything like that. And I want this thing to be a streetable driver where I can get in it, kids, the wife, whatever, and go cruising and not worry too much about the gas or the anything like that. That's out of here. But it does have some nice accoutrements, I would say, however. Being in 1961, it's sort of up in the air of what you can get with these cars. Uh, no power brake. It has single pot boosted power, power braking, but I'm going to upgrade that. It has power steering, which you really kind of like to have in these cars. Just makes driving them a whole lot easier. And as far as brakes, it's got it still drums all the way around, but they're the big, uh, I think they're 14 or 15 inch aluminum Buick drum brakes. I mean, they're pretty impressive even by today's standards for stopping power. So that's all well and good. That'll be fine for this car. The inside of this car greets you with all the fine things that you'd come to expect in a new car. Uh, it's got a radio. It has AC, maybe. It has a beautifully done up seat. Uh, looks just like grandma's couch and sits just as well as as well. Um, it's got power windows, power no power locks, power windows though. This car also has power seats. Pretty incredible for a bench. And it just it sits good. Just get in here and get comfortable. Nice. It's very, very space age across the dash. It just looks like we were still shooting for the moon at this point. It's very beautiful in that way. Uh, I really like that about it. And it just feels comfortable. Like you can just glide down the road and be ever so comfortable in this thing. That's always what I'm kind of looking for in a car. It's just something nice, something comfortable, something different. This is also one of those cars that, you know, you get a ton of vision outside it. Look at that cool wrapping windshield. Just lots and lots of view outside of the car. And I feel like that's something that's either hit or miss in the old stuff and that you definitely don't get in new cars today. The A pillars and B pillars on new cars are so big you can hardly drive around in them. This, you know what you hit when you hit it. The back seat is just as luxurious as the front, and it even has a cigarette lighter in case the kids need a Chesterfield. Chesterfield, the best possible smoke. Much milder. Always smooth. And individual ashtrays either side. Very nice. Oh, and how about that? The way these old doors close. Like butter. They do not make a door that that shuts this crisp these days, do they? Now let's open this bodacious trunk that all Buicks are known and loved for. Even, well, maybe not today, but in times gone by, they would have been really known for how large these rear trunks would have been. And what do we have back here? Carburetor sitting in diesel? That's fine. Couple of blown out spare tires, also fine. But along with that, we've also got room for at least one or two more bodies in this thing. It really has quite a spacious area. I mean, you could fit a lot of stuff in here, but in the days before minivans, this is what folks had. They had cars, and that's it. Unfortunately, the farmer fellow that we got this from got all tuned up one night and decided to give this poor thing a tune up in the back. Uh, good thing I know a good body, man. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, what are you going to put in that engine, in that car, Joe? Uh, an LS? No. A 350? No. 
something Buick or even GM. No, uh, let me show you. That's right, a Ford straight six. And you may be asking yourself why I would do such a ridiculous swap and why it, that just seems so silly. But I think that 4.9 is a great motor. It's probably one of the best motors ever made. I'm not even using this exact motor. I'm using one out of a 1996 F-150. And that would have had the highest rated uh, horsepower and torque that that motor put out. It would have made 145 horsepower and 265 torque, which is not that bad. The torque is where it's at. And that's what these Buicks have always been known for, is their high torque and not as high horsepower. So I feel like I'm sort of sticking in that ballpark of, you know, you know, this is a torquey car. That's kind of a torquey motor. Um, I can always put a turbo on it down the line. Uh, and I think it's going to fit in there actually pretty good. I'm going to carburate that thing. I'm going to five-speed swap this car. I think it's going to be a real cruiser. And the F-150 and the Buick actually weigh about the same, about 4,200 pounds. And when you're easy on these trucks, two-wheel drive, five-speed, you can get about 20 miles a gallon. I figure this will get about that, maybe more. And that's really what I'm looking for is some, some nice cruising speed, some nice cruising everything. This has a 355 rear gear in it, too, so it's going to sail down the highway like butter. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this car. Uh, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I'm going to call it Buford. Uh, it's going to be slick. There's not going to be anybody else that's going to have one. And you get to watch it and see what it happens if you hang out here a little longer. So uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you think I'm a maniac in the comments. And subscribe. Thanks, guys.